What's going on everybody? It's Jeff here. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to be talking about what is going on with the market, the shift that we might start to see happening, guys. So I really want to bring it to your attention before it happens. And then also we are going to be talking about something that I am seeing happening just a little bit all too often. All right. So stick around, guys. You're not going to want to miss this. For those of you that are new to the channel, all I ask is that you hit that like button and subscribe and join the family. If you're interested in joining our private community, it's the first link in the description. We have hundreds of members. We talk stocks and strategies all day long, guys. So come check it out. We'd love to have you. Let's get into the video, guys. First off, I do just want to point this out. This is an article as a full recap of the Fed's interest rate decision. And the Fed Chairman Jerome Powell's press conference I have of yesterday. It was good news. It looks like he's going to continue to keep interest rates low. They are also continuing to buy assets such as treasuries and mortgage-backed securities at a solid rate. The good thing about this meeting yesterday was the fact that investors actually believed them, believed them on his out outlook for economic growth and the recovery that was very very good news okay uh so keep that in mind the the bull market is still here we are still only in year two the average bull market lasts okay about four years so we still have some time ahead of us just know that things have changed okay so now what i really want to talk about is if you look at this right here this is the s p 500 and if you look at the last six months it is continuously trending upwards you've had a little bit of a pullback here in march a little bit of a pullback here in february but it is continuing to trend upwards now if your portfolio does not look like this there's a little bit of an issue and I had addressed this before talking about diversification. I addressed this before saying, guys, there is a rotation happening in the market, okay? When the S&P continues to make all-time highs, but the NASDAQ is plummeting, that doesn't mean money's coming out of the market. That means money is shifting in the market. And in that case, they were getting away from the high growth, the tech stocks that absolutely crushed it in 2020. And they were shifting it back over to some of those rundown, beaten down, stocks in the travel sector, okay, the entertainment sector, and a few other sectors as well, okay? So now, what are we starting to see? Well, I wanna jump over here to this platform and just look at a few plays that I had mentioned to you guys months ago, one of them being Groupon. I had said to you guys that it was a recovery play. I had also talked about the financial sector that was beaten down. You have Bank of America here. I talked about Wells Fargo as well. These are solid moves going up. Next thing I want to talk about, which is a long-term hold I have in my portfolio, is Home Depot. It's had a huge run since, right here, if you look at this date, March 1st. Well, if you look back at what happened on February 11th, that's when tech began to sell off. Home Depot got beaten down a little bit, even though it is not in the tech sector and has a solid run also because of everybody wanting the improvements on their home and everybody becoming a DIYer okay, during the COVID outbreak. This is still a long-term hold that I've had for many, many years in my portfolio. I had mentioned to you guys Walmart in the past few months that has come back really well. Also mentioned to you guys United Healthcare that's been an, uh, an absolute tear. Talked about Costco. This was like an Easter, you know, Easter rally weekends kicking off in March. I mentioned it, and since then it's already up, you know, twenty percent. Okay, for any of you that got into them, we had also talked about a long time ago Carnival Cruise Lines that was going to come back and American Airlines, which is starting to consolidate. If you look at this one and carnival cruise line starting to consolidate okay so why am i bringing up these stocks well there's a couple things i want to talk about here the first thing is that you are starting to a little bit see some consolidation you have seen i should say not starting to see you have seen consolidation on the tech sector okay you look at stocks like neo the ev sector you're seeing that consolidation you're also seeing at the lows you're seeing the consolidation at the highs okay of your beaten down your travel stocks that haven't yet the recovery in the in the economy hasn't fully opened up yet so you're starting to see a little bit of that peak so the reason why i want to bring this up to you guys is i see way too many people that they end up buying a stock we talk about a stock whether it's what i mentioned on my channel we talked about in the group whether it's something that they found out on their own they buy it they ride it up and they think that it's just going to continue to go up and up and up and then it starts to go down and then it continues to go down and continues to go down and they never sell. This is one of the big things that happened with CCIV. We had talked about, you know, uh, buy the rumor, sell the news. 
So it's, I mean, I have a lot of faith in CCIV. I still hold a position in CCIV, but I told everybody in the group exactly what my plan was because it's still a speculative company at the time. It hasn't, you know, they haven't even, there's not, you know, there was no sales at the time of this merger that when it was announced, it was very spe speculative. And you watch people that bought in at 30 and then it went down and went down and went down to 30 and then popped back up to 40. And then it went down and went down and then they still own it today in the 20s. And it's just been sitting between 20 and 25 for quite a while now and and they've never sold and the what i want to come across to you guys is don't marry into a stock okay it's okay to become attached to a stock to have a slight relationship with a stock okay to be invested like i am with cciv i sold off a huge portion of it to maintain those profits but i still have some because i feel like attached to it i feel like this is going to be a holy grail in many years to come and i will add to my position as times you know aware to it as the capital comes in for my own portfolio as well as earnings start to come in revenue starts to come in for the company they're continuing to hit their deadlines and meet their expectations i will continue to add to it but that's why i say don't marry a stock because when you marry a stock it's you're riding it and you're riding it and you're riding it and you're you're you're, you're hitting all the the lows when you're not adding at the lows and then you're hitting at the highs and you're not selling at the highs and you're just maintaining. And you look at some people's portfolios over the people that have been in the market for the last year and they're sitting there saying like, okay, yeah, I'm even or I'm up 10% or I'm even down 10%. And you're like, wait a minute, the market is on a, it's been on a tear. The market alone since January 1st of 2020, not since April 1st after the March tank, since January 1st, the NASDAQ was up 40% for the year. You know, how is your portfolio at that? And when you look at it, they're riding all the highs up and they're never getting out and they're not even trimming off some of it. Get that, get the money, get your, at least your initial investment and stay on the house money. Okay. So from the reason why I wanted to make this video guys is, you know, take some of the emotions out of it. And I don't want to say, oh, you know, get the mentality of a day trader and so forth. No. And that's why I said, stick to the stocks you have a relationship with. But don't marry it because then you're never going to, you're not adding to it and you're never selling. You're just holding it and you're watching those peaks because these stocks right now are very cyclical. They're going up, they're going down, they're going up. Some of them will trend higher. Okay. Like I do have, you know, the ones that I will hold for a very, very long period of time. Although I have trimmed my positions and added to them like Apple and Tesla, which I plan to give down to my, my children. Okay. I trimmed my positions in February and I added to them as of March. You know, but you're not only riding them out. That's how you're going to be able to outperform a standard S&P 500 ETF by being able to trim some of your portfolio. I'm not saying always look to sell 100%, buy 100%, sell 100%, but be able to trim some off the top so you can continue to have the cash on hand to find new plays, to add down to beaten down plays, okay? Add money, I'm sorry, add money to beaten down plays when they are at their lows and they're looking at a sign of reversal. So I hope this video gives you a little bit of insight. At least maybe you could take a step back, be like, wait a minute, am I just riding some of these? Am I am I watching it go up, thinking it can go even higher and higher and higher and higher and higher? And then it starts going down. I'm like, oh, it's gonna come back and then it just keeps going down and, and there's no action being taken. You're just watching it and then you're kicking yourself in the butt. You know, so just think about that. I hope, you know, it, if this video can just give you a little bit of insight just to take a step back and be like, wait a minute, maybe I need to think about that even more. Be happy with your gains. Don't ever look at, oh, I sold at 50 and it went to 70. Yeah, well, yeah, it could have gone back down to 30 too. So you're, you can't only look at the bright side. You know what I mean? You have to look at both sides of the factor when it comes to the stock market. So that's it for this video, guys. I'll see you in the next one.